Happy Kid Hot Mess by Jeff Kinney. June, Monday. My dad's always saying you can pick your notes, but you can't pick your family. And even though I get his meaning, it doesn't exactly make me want to share a bowl of popcorn, popcorn with him. He's right about family though, because the second you are born, you're automatically in a group of people you never asked to be a part of. In fact, when you are born, a bunch of stuff has already been decided for you, like where you will live and even what language you will speak. But since you can't actually talk yet, you can't tell the people taking care of you that mushed up prunes and carrots are a bad combination. I think he likes it. The first thing you learn as a kid is that grown-ups are the ones in charge, and the second thing you learn is that they don't make the best decisions. Here the mum is taking a picture and Greg is crying because he doesn't like it. Then you find out the, the people in charge of them, you have people who are in charge of them. And at least that's the way it, it is in my family where grandma's the one who calls the shots. But you never know she has so much power just by looking at her. I made your favourite cookies. There's actually a whole story how to how Grandma became the head of our family. When my great grandmother Mimo passed away, someone needed to step up to take her place as our leader. But since Grandma was the youngest of four sisters, it didn't look like she'd be the one to take over the family. But then something happened that changed all that. For Easter brunch one year, Grandma made a pot of meatballs and everyone went crazy for them. Great Uncle Herman declared that Grandma was the Grandma was the best cook in the family. Everyone else agreed, which I'm sure was hard for her older sisters. The way it works in my family is that if you're the best cook, you get to host the big holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas. But Grandma's Grandma's older sisters all live far away and they don't like to travel on the holidays. So Great Aunt Lou came up with a special recipe of her own to try and one-up Grandma. But she just couldn't top Grandma's meatballs. Care for some spinach dip? Ever since Grandma introduced her special meatballs, everyone's been trying to get her to tell them the secret recipe. But Grandma's no dummy. She knows that giving it up would giving up her power. So she just tells everybody that her meatballs only have one ingredient and it's love. Nobody seems satisfied with that answer. Though, and lately a few of my aunts have been trying to steal the recipe. Last Christmas, Aunt Gretchen tried to sneak away with a few meatballs so she could take them to a lab and get them analysed for their ingredients. The only reason she didn't get away with it was because Grandma's dog, Sweetie, sniffed them out before she could get to her car. Bark, bark, bark! Um, <clears throat> then one night, Aunt Audra came to stay with Grandma. She hid her phone in a kitchen cabinet so she returned so she could record Grandma making a batch of meatballs and Grandma discovered the hidden phone and put it in the garbage disposal. Everyone's always telling Grandma her, re her recipe is so good she should open a restaurant and make a pile of money. My Aunt Veronica is a business woman and she, ca she even came up with a plan for a whole chain of restaurants that would serve Grandma's meatballs. From my kitchen to yours. <clears throat> but Grandma shut that idea down by saying that you can't get a real home cooked meal in a restaurant and her meat meatballs were the only for the family. I didn't mean to sound harsh or anything, but I hope Grandma sh shares her recipe with someone in the family soon because she's not getting any younger. In fact, she moved out of her house and into it assisted light living centre a few miles away. Mum says Grandma's happy there because she, she's with people her age and they have lots of activities but I sure hope my kids don't try and tip me off to a place like that when I'm older because I'm actually looking forward to being a burden to my children.
And Grandma's turning 75 soon, and my mum and her sister told Grandma she wanted to throw a big party for her birthday, but Grandma says she doesn't want anyone to go to any trouble for her, and she doesn't have the energy for a party like that anymore. Then Grandma said that would make her really happy if everyone else went to Rutty Neck Island, where the family used to vacation back when Mum and her sisters were kids. Grandma said the only gift she wanted was a photo of the whole family on the beach with the old lighthouse in the background, like the picture she keeps in her apartment. I guess mum and her sisters couldn't say no to grandma's birthday request because they'd feel too guilty. So just like that, everybody's summer plans got turned upside down, which proves grandma is the one pulling the strings in our family. It's not looking forward to this, uh, but I'm not looking forward to this trip, though, because I'm really not a beach person, but mum says we'll make happy family memories and she even booked the same house they stayed in as kids to make the vacation extra special. From the picture, the beach house looks a little small to me and there are a lot of more people in the family now and there were, that there were when mum and her sisters were young. But what I'm really nervous about is the combination of people going on vacation together. Mum and her sisters only see each other a few times a year, and there's a reason for that. Whenever they're together, all they do is fight. And sometimes it gets so bad between them that Grandma has to step in and break things up. So I want to say for the record that this whole trip is a bad idea. I... The way I see it, a family vacation is like a recipe and some ingredients just don't mix. Tuesday. Mum's been trying to get me and my brothers excited by showing us old photo albums from her vacations on Rutty Neck Island. But every so often there's a page where someone was cut out of a picture. Mum explained that if one of my aunts dated some boy and they broke up, Grandma would cut them out of the photo. That That's because she feels like a fa- family photos are only for family. All of a sudden, some something I always used to wonder about made sense. When I was little, I found an envelope stuffed with cutouts of teenagers and I never knew who they were. And I play with them like they were action figures. And I created these crazy storylines for each character. Tell them where you're hiding the secret plan. I'm not giving them up without a fight. Then prepare to meet your doom. The last time mum, time mum's family went to Ratinek Island, she and her sisters were in high school. Aunt Keiki must have must have had a boyfriend that summer because she said there were a bunch of pictures of her next to someone who'd been cut out. But when I asked mum about Aunt Keiki's boyfriend, she said it was a long time ago and she, she couldn't remember anything about him. I guess grandma got sick of cutting ex-boyfriends out of photos because eventually she made a rule that you're not allowed to be in a family pictures unless you're officially married in. And that's a little awkward for Vincent, who's been dating Aunt Keiki for six years, but always has to stand behind the camera when we take our family photos. We learnt our lesson about this kind of thing by taking too many pictures of Noah, who dated Aunt Veronica for a while. Everybody in the family loved Noah, and she... She, he was front of and, and center in a lot of our pictures. But a couple of times he made it into our family newsletter that Grandma mails out every year. Family folly. Noah does it again. Promoted to original manager. What will Noah do next? Unfortunately, it didn't work out between Noah and Aunt Veronica. So he vanished from the family newsletter and that made things kind of awkward whenever our family would run into someone who's in the mailing list. Hey, any updates on that Noah fella? But what was even more awkward was when Grandma found out Noah still had a t-shirt from our family reunion and she went to his gym and to make him give it back. I think Vincent's playing on proposing 
to Aunt Fran Aunt Kiki one day, and he knows he needs to get Grandma's best blessing first. He he's been working hard to impress her, but I can tell she's gonna milk this as long as she can. To be honest, I really don't understand why Vincent's so eager to be a part of our family. In fact. If he wants my slot, I'll be happy to hand it to him. And I don't know if there's a laws or paperwork involved in that kind of deal, but I'd be willing to do whatever it takes to get this thing done. Wednesday. Even though I'm not looking forward to spending a week at the beach with my family, there's there's one thing I am excited about doing, and that's going out to eat. Mum says Ratinek Island has a bunch of restaurants, and I'm planning on eating at a different one every night. Home, we almost never go out to eat, and when we do, it's almost always to a family-style restaurant like Corny's. So I'm looking forward to going to a restaurant where they don't use a garden nose clean off your table. It wouldn't it would also be nice to go to a place where you eat off a plate instead of from, from a bucket. But I'm kind of worried about how my family might behave, behave at a classy restaurant. Because the last time we ate at a fancy place, it didn't go well. We went out for dinner to celebrate mum's getting her master's degree. And the restaurant had white linen tablecloths. But my family is used to going to... Places like Corny's where the tablecloths are made of paper and you can draw on them with crayons and markers. And before anyone realised what he was doing, Manny had covered his end of the table with the drawings. I guess those fancy tablecloths are expensive because the restaurant m made my parents pay for it. But Mum decided that if we owned, had to pay for the tablecloth, that meant we owned it, so we took it home with us. And now we pull it out every time we have a special meal. That's when one of my cousins come to our house and write on the tablecloth. And the last time Aunt Gritson's family came to visit, one of her twins wrote a bad word in six in inch letters in permanent marker. This thing was with the tablecloth would would never would have happened if the members of my family just knew how to act civilised. My friend Rowley's family eat at their country club at least once a week so they know how you're supposed to act at a fancy restaurant. But when the Jeffersons invited me to come along with them, one time I had no idea how how. You were supposed to behave in a place like that. First of all, I'm used to going to places where there are pictures of the different menu items and you just point out what you want to order. But the country club, there weren't any pictures and the menu was all in French. So when Rowley ordered, I thought it was sounding kind of goofy. Je vais prendre sa somme en paleto. Merci. Ha ha. The restaurant also had expensive silverware and there was a different type of fork for each course which seemed a little silly to me. I'm just glad we're living in a time where the fork is what we used to eat because it wasn't all that long ago that people actually used daggers to feed themselves and it's, it's stressful enough in the cafeteria at my school as it is. He's throwing protection. These two are eating normally, but these two aren't eating normally. This guy is, but these people who are standing up, they are being silly. There are, there are certain types of food you wouldn't even be able to eat without a fork, and good luck to anyone trying to eat spaghetti with a knife. I wish I'd never learned to master the fork. So when I was a baby, I really enjoyed being fed by someone. Here comes the train. Choo-choo. Once, once you learn to feed yourself, everyone expects you to keep doing it. But I'm looking forward to the day when I can free up my hands while I'm eating again. Robot feeding him. Num-num. The menus and silverware 
weren't the only things that were different about the country club. At Corny, the waiters wear cowboy hats and overalls with holes in them. But at the country club, the waiters were dressed in tuxedos and looked like they were going to a wedding. Each server had a different thing they were in charge of. There was even one guy whose whole job to use was to use a knife to scrape crumbs off the tablecloth. And I made sure to create lots of crumbs so that guy felt he was earning his money. They even had people working in the bathroom. One guy's job was to hand you a little towel to dry your hands after you wash them, which seemed a little odd to me. In fact, at first I didn't even realise that he was a restaurant employee. I thought he was just some random person who was hanging out near the sink, which is why I reported him to the manager. Through an appetizer, the waiter brought us bowls of soup. I didn't know what was in it, but it was really delicious. I remember reading that in some countries, the way you show your appreciation to a server is by slurping your soup. But I got the feeling that's not the way you're supposed to do things at the Jefferson's Country Club. Slurp! But when it came to time to order the main course, I I couldn't believe how expensive everything was. I tried to convince Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Jefferson to just give me the money and they would, would have spent on my meal instead because there was a lot I could do with that kind of cash. But Mr. Jefferson told me not to worry about how, thing, how much things cost and pick something from the menu I thought I'd enjoy. I couldn't decide between lobster tail and steak, so I just so I ordered both. The main course took a long time to come, and while we were waiting for our dinner, the waiter kept refilling our breadstick basket. So, so by the time my two main courses arrived, I was totally stuffed. Thinking, waste of money. Okay, looks sad. And Greg thinks, I don't want it. I'm, I'm hoping that there's a restaurant like that on Ratty Neck Island because I don't feel like I, ha- I had the full fancy dining experience. Yet hopefully when I go- get home, the Jeffersons will invite me back to their country club because there were a few items on the dessert menu that looked like they were to die for. Bilch... Saturday, Mum said her favourite part of her family vacation to Ratty Neck Island was the fur- furry ride over. But that was the thing I was dreading the most. First of all, I heard stories about killer waves randomly attacking bites. And that doesn't sound like a great way to kick off a vacation to me. The, but the thing I was even more nervous about was pirates. Because Mum said that back in the old days, Rotty Neck Island was a notorious pirate hideout. Dad said it's been a long time since pirates sailed these seas around these parts. But I was worried that there would still be a few stragglers who never got the message to quit. And those guys are going to be pretty ticked off when they realise they'd be missing out on things like cell phones and soft serve ice cream all these years. <sighs> it's a pirate, Greg thinks. Oh, here's some ice cream. Whenever you see a movie about pirates, there's always some kid on board whose job is to swab the deck or climb up into the crow's nest to be on the lookout for other ships. So I'd be totally useless in a job like that. No. I have a fear of heights, so I couldn't work as a lookout. I get seasick if I had to mop the deck while the ship was moving, and I'm pretty sure I'd be lousy at playing the fife, so they'd probably toss me overboard after a day or two. I figured the kids on those pirate ships didn't choose to be pirates, which means they were kidnapped, and ever since I was little, I'd been worried that could happen to me. When I turned six, six years old, my mother booked a harbour cruise for my birthday as a surprise.
But when I saw the boat waiting at the dock, I had a total meltdown. Freak! It hurt! Party pirates! The mum got tickets for a boat that didn't have a pirate theme, and I thought that we were safe. But the pirate crews caught up with us in the harbour, and they spent the rest of my birthday walk, walking around in wet clothes. Sploosh! So, there are other things to worry about besides whales and pirates, though. I just wrapped up, up our unit on Greek mythology in school, and the thing those stories make clear is that the gods don't like people going where they don't belong. So, we stepped on the ferry this afternoon. I took a minute to show some proper respect. Oh, mighty Poseidon, please grant me some me safe passage into your kingdom. At first it was smooth sailing, but when the wind picked up in the middle of the ride and the waves got choppy, I, I was pretty nervous we might capsize. Uh, it was so rocky that half the people on board got sick. In fact, there were so many people throwing up overboard that I was afraid I might do it myself. <coughs> I went inside to get away from everyone on deck, but the main cabinet cabin was like a hospital ward which meant there was no place for me to escape. The ferry ride was only three hours but felt more like three days and when we finally safely reached the shore there was no one happier to be on dry land than me. Welcome to Ratty Neck Island. Greg is kissing the floor because he likes land better than riding a boat. Because he missed the land. We took a cab into town, which turned out to be a mistake. There were so many pedestrians clogging the road that we couldn't even move and nobody seemed concerned they were blocking traffic. Mum was getting anxious about how long it was taking because the sun was going down and it was starting to get dark. Plus she only had only key she and she wanted to get to the house before her sisters did so after sitting in traffic for half an hour she decided she had enough we took our suitcases in the trunk and walked the mile and a half to our beach which wasn't easy with all the stuff we were carrying on the top of that mum didn't seem to know where she was going i guess there'd be a lot of development on the island since she was here with her family on their last trip and it took her, her a long time to find the beach house where they used to stay. Mum Mum took out the key to unlock the door but it was cracked open until there was a, we, we were surprised to discover that Aunt Gretchen and her twins were inside and had already made themselves at home. Aunt Gretchen said they, they got there a half hour early and since the door was locked they crawled in through the bathroom window <clears throat> then they put their stuff in a, the biggest bedroom which mum had been re reserving for our family. I guess mum didn't want to start the trip with a fight so she just let Aunt Gretchen's family have the master bedroom but the next biggest room was already occupied by aunt veronica and her dog dazzle who were both in the middle of a nap after a long day of traveling i suppose surprised that aunt veronica made the trip since she lives in the city with her dog and the two of them almost n never leave their apartment that's because Daz dazzle is famous and she can't really go out in public anymore The way it happened is a little nuts. And Aunt Veronica is making videos for the internet telling people how to invest their money. And sometimes Dazzle would walk through the background while Aunt Veronica was live streaming. Not only, but once her followers started noticing the dog, that's all they wanted to see. Aunt Veronica Veronica saw an opportunity so she dropped the whole investment advice thing and just made videos about her pet and within a year Dazzle had 3.7 million followers and a line of merchandise that people can purchase 
online. It turns out that when you've got millions of followers, com companies will send you free products so, so that you use them in your videos. After a while, Dazzle got so much free stuff that Aunt Veronica had to move to a bigger apartment just to handle everything that was coming in. But being a social media star comes with a lot of pressure too. Aunt Veronica has to film does it round the clock because she's not streaming. She feels like she's losing money. I guess Aunt Veronica decides that she couldn't go it all by herself anymore. Though, so she hired a whole team of people to help her. And for long, Dazzle had a groomer, a photographer, a videographer, and one person whose only job was to keep the dog's nose wet. But fame's got a dark side because people started to show, show up outside Dazzle's aunt, outside Aunt Veronica's apartment to get a glimpse of Dazzle. Apparently you can make money selling candid shots of celebrities and Aunt Veronica has to worry about someone taking an embarrassing picture of Dazzle they can sell to some sleazy magazine. A person can only keep their guard up for so long and lately people have been finding creative ways of getting unflattering photos. Like this guy looking in a trash trash can taking a picture of Dazzle and he's thinking, ooh, why, why is he taking a picture of me? A week, a few weeks ago, Aunt Veronica had to move again to an apartment on the other side of the city with better security, but the new place was too far out of the way for the dog team, and they started quitting one by one. By then, Dazzle's groomer was pretty famous herself, and she opened her own salon, but from what I heard, she would have stuck with giving haircuts to dogs. Mum says Aunt Veronica wishes she never turned her dog into a social media star because it made both of their lives miserable and they guess they, they've been looking forward to getting away and staying out of the public eye for a while. But that's not going to be easy. Right before the trip started, Aunt Veronica posted a fake picture of Dazzle in front of the <clears throat> Eiffel Tower to throw Dazzle followers, followers off her trail, but Aunt Veronica was a little sloppy with the photo editing, which is why the dog ended up with a five paws. Bonjour, dear Paris. Eiffel Tower and Dazzle. So now everyone in the internet has a theory about what's going on with the dog, and they're more curious about her than ever. Personally, I I think the whole social media thing is a little crazy. There's one guy online who films himself unboxing kitchen appliances and he got so many followers he was able to quit his day job. Back in the old olden times, people had lots of kids so they could work on the family farm. But if I ever, if my, if I ever have kids on my, of my own, I'm going to put them to work being social media influencers. And the second they're born, they're going to have a camera in their face. The only reason I haven't haven't tried becoming an influencer myself is because I don't have a phone and that's pretty embarrassing because both of my cousins have one and they're not even out of elementary school yet. One thinks Aunt Gretchen twins are too young to have phones of their own and that they're on electronics way too much, but Aunt Gretchen thinks mum is overprotective and once the two of them start start arguing about this topic, there's no stopping them. Aunt Gretchen accuses mum of being a helicopter parent who's always hovering over us kids. But even though Aunt Gretchen might be right about that, I always liked having a helicopter mum nearby to keep me safe. In fact, Mum saved me from a bunch of situations where I could have gotten, my, gotten myself seriously injured. But maybe I've gotten a little too used to my mum having a my back because sometimes I get a little nervous crossing the street without help from a grown-up. Will you hold my hand? 
Even though Mum can be a little overprotective, Aunt Gretchen tells Mal- Malcolm and Melvin do whatever they want, and I think a little parenting would go a long way with those two. Like tying Greg up like their enemies. Speaking of being overprotective, Aunt Veronica treats Dazzy like she's her child. In fact, I'm pretty sure Dazzy thinks she's an actual human being and Aunt Veronica gets touchy when you use a certain phrase around her. I'm dog tired after that trip. Aunt Veronica says that thing is Dazzle realise she's an animal. She won't be able to hand, handle it. The first thing Aunt Veronica did when she got to the beach house was cover up all the mirrors and shiny substance so the dog couldn't see her own reflection. Unfortunately, that's going to make it hard for everyone to use the toaster.